Continuing on some dimensional analysis problems, let's take a look at these two. Uh, for problem number five, we want to change 500,000 seconds and see how many days that is. And then we also want to look at how many minutes there are in one week. Uh, in each of these problems, I do know lots of relationships about time, but to be honest, I don't know how many seconds there are in a day or how many minutes there are in a week. You can sit and try to figure this out on your own, um, but to be honest, if we're using this dimensional analysis process, we can let the process sort out our work and keep us organized to make sure we don't miss anything. Let's see how we can use the dimensional uh, analysis process to our advantage. In this case, I'm going to start out just like before. Um, for problem five, I want to start with 500,000 seconds. Now, because I'm going to be working with unit fractions, think of that. Remember that that seconds is on top. You don't have to write it over one, but you need to make sure you think of it as being on top. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, go from seconds to days, but I just don't know off the top of my head how many seconds there are in a day. But I do know how many seconds there are in a minute. And so I'm just going to kind of start here. Um, I know that in one minute there's 60 seconds. Again, double check and make sure the 60 has to go with the seconds. Uh, 60 minutes is not equal to one second. So it's, you've got to make sure the number goes with the word that, that has that equal value. So what I've got so far is the seconds cancel out. Now if I stop right now, what I'll have is how many minutes 500,000 seconds is. But that's not really what I want. I'd like how many days there are. I can multiply by conversion fractions, or I can multiply by one as many times as I want without changing the problem. So I can actually multiply by a whole string of conversion fractions, and that's what I'm going to do to solve this. Right now, I've gotten the seconds to cancel out, and I'm to minutes, but I don't really want minutes. Um, what I want to do get to is days. So I start here with minutes, and I don't know how many minutes there are in a day off the top of my head, but I do know how many minutes there are in an hour. There's 60 minutes in one hour. Now the minute units are going to cancel, and now what I have is I have set up a problem that's going to change me from seconds into hours, which is great. I'm lots closer, but not quite where I want to be. I'd still like to get to days, so let's keep my kind of keep this trail up. Right now I have hours on the top, and I don't want hours, so I need hours on the bottom to cancel, and I'd like to change them to days. Now in this particular case, I know that there are 24 hours in one day and I can fill those values in. So the great thing about this now is I'm almost done. I can multiply all the way across the top and multiply all the way across the bottom and see what's going to happen because what's left in terms of units is only days. And so as long as my numbers get resolved, I'll have my solution. Uh, so multiplying across the top, 500,000 times lots of ones gets me 500,000 on the top. On the bottom, I need to do 60 times 60 times 24. So let's pull that up. 60 times 60 times 24. And this will give me 86,400. And then I can just do 500,000 divided by that 86,400. And that will be my solution. So 500,000 divided by 86,400 gets me, we'll just round to two decimal places again, 5.7, that'll round up to 9. 5.79, and then my um, unit that I wanted, what's left from my conversion, is days. So 500,000 seconds is the same, is almost 8 days, or sorry, almost 6 days, 5.79 days. So I can use this concept of creating a whole trail of unit conversions and just make sure that any time that I have a conversion fraction, things are canceling out and I'm moving closer and closer to my goal. So let's do that same thing here. How many minutes are there in a week? Well, that means I want to start with one week and I want to convert this until I get to where there's minutes. Again, the week is kind of like it's on top. Uh, if I'm working my way to minutes, I don't know how many minutes there are in a week, but I do know how many days there are in a week. So week unit on top, week unit on the bottom will cancel out and get me to days. And there's seven days in one week. Okay, I don't want days. So I keep going. If there's seven days in a week, um, so I want to get rid of days. Days are on the top, so they go on the bottom. 
and I want to change, uh, I don't know how many minutes there are in a day, but I can go from days to how many hours there are in a day. And I know that there's 24 hours in one day. That'll get my days units to cancel, and now I have changed weeks into hours. Hours aren't quite what I want yet, I want minutes, so I'm gonna, hours are on top, so I write hours on the bottom. That will get those to cancel out, and I would like to go to minutes, and I do, in fact, know how many minutes there are in an hour. There's 60 minutes in one hour, so I can fill those in. Now the hours cancel. I'm left just with minutes. Notice that every unit along the way has an equal measurement on top and bottom. Seven days in a week, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, and I can now get my solution from here. I'm going to multiply all the numbers across the top, so 1 times 7 times 24 times 60. Let's pull that up here. 1 times 7 times 24 times 60, and that gives me uh, 10,080. Multiply across the bottom is 1, divide, and we get 10,080 minutes every week. So this dimensional analysis is super, super, uh, super helpful. Uh, we can do it if we know just the single conversion, but if we need multiple conversions, we can use that to help us out. Uh, this concept of multiplying by a whole chain of conversion factors is really important when we need to convert uh, multiple units. Uh, sometimes we call them compound units or rates, which is what we'll do in the next video.